Hey guys, Modzi here, and today I want to try and answer the question of whether you can substitute a Quadro card for a GeForce card in your retro gaming uh, build or PC. But more specifically, what I wanted to do is really dive into the strengths and the weaknesses of each card uh, because there seems to be a little bit of misinformation uh, going around about uh, what really you can substitute and, and where the performance really lies. And some people are quoting that a Quadro is nowhere near as fast as a GeForce. Whereas you're seeing some other, uh, you know, reviews and things like that, and um, other, you know, videos that show that really there really isn't any performance between the two. So what I wanted to do is go into detail as much as possible about um, sort of showing the strengths and weaknesses of each card. So what I've got here is a GeForce, uh, sorry, an NVIDIA Quadro 4 900 XGL, and its counterpart, the GeForce 4 Ti 4600. Both of these cards have the identical core. They run at the exact same clock speed, the same memory speed, uh, same memory interface. Uh, for all intents and purposes, these cards are identical, um, except for the fact, obviously, that the Quadro has dual DVI and the uh, GeForce has VGA and S-Video. Uh, and this card also has a couple of other features that are designed for the professional space, like the 3D Sync uh, port that's designed to attach to the daughter boards uh, that Quadros have when you're running more than two monitors. Um, so what really are the differences of these? So what I've done is try to put together a suite of benchmarks, uh, for both game and synthetic, to show the strengths and weaknesses of each card. So what we're going to do now is dive into my desktop and we're going to go over the spreadsheet that I put together with all the results of these cards. Alright guys, so here we are with the benchmark and performance, and this is my Quadro 4 versus GeForce 4 in-depth performance review. I just couldn't really think of anything else to call it, to be honest. Um, and this is the test system, so the rest of the system specs, just in case you wish to know. This is my uh, Intel Pentium 4 3.4 GHz Northwood with uh, hyperthreading. Uh, hyperthreading is enabled, by the way, uh, and it is clocked at 3.5 GHz uh, by way of a... Uh, I believe it's a 206 front side bus multiplier, which then means that the 2 gig of OCC DDR400 is running at 412 megahertz. CAS latency of 2 on my uh, 478 Albatron PX865 PE Pro motherboard. We are running Windows XP uh, Service Pack 3 uh, 32-bit with the NVIDIA Forceware 93.71 with the updated version of DirectX 9C, so the latest version through Windows updates, and uh, Windows is uh, completely up to date by the way. So the very first benchmark here, you guys might not have ever heard of this benchmark before. This is a really fascinating benchmark that is designed to do ray tracing. Now, you guys might have heard ray tracing talked about very recently in the news with the introduction of the uh, RTX uh, settings and uh, bits and pieces and stuff from NVIDIA. Well, this is a very early version of a ray tracing benchmark from early 2000s, and this is designed to render a 3D environment uh, in op uh, sorry not open in direct 3D sorry in direct 3D, uh, but with ray tracing enabled. And there's some other features at the benchmark you can turn on like reflections and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this card, this benchmark is a little bit newer than these cards, so I did have all the features turned off and I just run it at this resolution with all of the tick boxes turned off. So if you go and download this and you want to compare results, um, I had all of the uh, extra bells and whistles turned off and it was just run at this resolution uh, and these are the results that spat out. So very clearly here you can see that a Quadro card is able to render a direct 3D environment with ray tracing a lot more, uh, well, a lot faster than what a GeForce card can. Um, now to put this uh, result into a little bit of perspective for you guys, because obviously if you guys are familiar with 3D Mark, you might be able to uh, tell, you might already know what the difference between the overall scores are, you know, when you see two 3D Mark scores, but you might not know what the difference is between these two scores in relation to this benchmark. So a GeForce 6800 Ultra, for example, scores around a little bit over uh, 6,000, I think it's like 6,100 points in this benchmark using the exact same settings. So this is a very harsh benchmark and it's actually designed to run at this kind of frame rate. It's not really designed uh, to run at much 
higher frame rate than what you're seeing here at the moment. Uh, so this is min-max average FPS, and this is the score that came out. And consistent, consistently, after three runs, uh, this was the score that was spat out of both cards. And yeah, consistently, the GeForce, uh, sorry, the Quadro 4 card can handle ray tracing a lot faster than the GeForce card can. So then moving on to 3D Mark 2001. And this is an interesting picture. Now, the way that I tested 3D Mark 2001 is I did... Uh, three runs of the benchmark and then recorded the third benchmark run and that's because 3D Mark 2001 can be a little bit inconsistent when you swap in a card in and out of the system and the drivers have to reinitialize with a new card it can actually give you lower scores if you just take the first run of that benchmark in fact I, what I recommend doing is putting the new card in especially with Windows XP uh, letting the drivers initialize check that the cards running and then restart the computer a second time let the drivers load up fresh uh, and then run the benchmark uh, the number of times that you need to to get the scores that you want to. So in this case, I ran uh, each 3D mark run on each card three times and then took the result from the third benchmark run in order. Uh, and this is what was spat out. The Quadro card was slightly faster. Not by a huge amount, but I mean, it was, it was, I mean, it's not noticeable to the naked eye because, I mean, these scores are almost identical. In fact, some would say that's almost in margin of error. But when you take the consistency that these games, uh, that these cards were running this benchmark, um, the, the, the Quadro was consistently faster uh, in that benchmark. Then we're going to move on to 3D Mark 2003. And in this one, uh, well, there's like 10 FPS difference here um, for this test, but almost identical for the rest. In fact, a little bit slightly higher on the third. Um, now, the, the ones here that say unsupported are because these are designed for DirectX 9 only, and of course these cards are only 8.1, so they can't render them, uh, so it just skips over those tests. But here you can see that the fill rate is a lot slower than the uh, GeForce uh, version of the card. Surprising. And then ragdolls as well. Um, the Vertex-based ragdoll test here. Um, consistently, even though Vertex shader here weirdly gets the same when it comes to this, it's slightly faster, I'm not sure. Then I wanted to cover SpecView Perf 7.0, which you can actually still get off their website, by the way. This goes into where the Quadro card is at its strengths. So each individual test here is the exact name of each test when it spits out the results. So if you want to check what um, if you want to check your own card, you will see that this is what they're called. But each of these is a different type of program that is in the professional space. So this, by the way, is not DirectX 7. This is Data Extractor, I think it is, or Examine. I can't remember exactly what it is. That's what it stands for anyway. It's not DirectX 7. So essentially these are types, different types of 3D based programs and then it goes through different models within each of those programs and spits out an average frame rate uh, in basically like, a, like an average frame rate for each of those um, loops that it does essentially. And well if you have a look here you can very consistently see what's going on here and this actually tells a picture of where the strengths of the Quadro card really lie. And here's the thing. These two scores here are less than these two. These two tests, from my understanding, I could be slightly wrong here, but uh, from what I did research-wise, these are OpenGL tests. And the, uh, the GeForce card performed, got a higher frame rate because it was able to just render the frames faster, whereas the Quadro was uh, slower because it was obviously designed to be more precise. However, 3D Max is also, from my understanding, uh, also OpenGL, but it performed at a higher frame rate. Interesting. And then we move on to uh, this light one, and I don't know how to pronounce the other two, so apologies. Uh, but again, quite consistently, especially with this last one here, um, the Quadro just crushes the GeForce card in average frame rate, rendering out these models. Um, it was almost like there was two generation of cards running these tests. Um, I got questioned about why I in included spec view perf here, and I did that because this illustrates where the strengths of the Quadro cards really lie, and that is because they are optimized for these types of tests with these types of programs, as opposed to 3D Mark, for example. So, on to more game benchmarks then, of course. We are now got a DirectX benchmark code creatures Pro. Um, you can see the resolution that I used. 
And well, these two pretty much run identical. I could not tell these two runs apart. Um, this is obviously the best of three runs, and uh, sorry, this is three runs, and this is the third run, the score of the third run. And well, consistently, they were neck and neck. I mean, there was no difference between the two uh, cards here uh, in this direct 3D benchmark. Interesting, though, however, now we're going to move on to the Drone Z Mark OpenGL benchmark running in 32 bit color mode. Uh, and there's some other features and bits and pieces, but there's a pretty much running default setting, so I didn't go in and customize anything in this benchmark at all. As I mentioned, OpenGL benchmark, so we should expect here that the Quadro card is going to run slower because it's designed to run more accurately and precisely in OpenGL applications. And that's exactly what it did, uh, quite consistently across the board, except for the minimums um, and the... Okay, let me break down and actually explain what each of these sections here mean. So the first one is the main one that you guys need to look at, because that's the raw frame rate of how the test was actually running. You have the total number of frames rendered for that 3D scene. You have the minimum FPS, the maximum FPS, and then the average FPS. Technically, this is like two FPS, less than two FPS difference between the two. But uh, there's a little bit of difference when it comes to the minute max here. And I don't know how to explain that, but yeah. These results below, however, this is the texture and lighting triangle polygons and the OpenGL triangular polygons. Minimum, maximum, average uh, amount of polygons per second. So... This is not a me measure of frame rate, it's a measure of polygons per second. Uh, sorry, polygons per frame uh, that it was able... No, uh, I'm correct, sorry, polygons per second, sorry, that it was able to do. And quite consistently, the GeForce card was faster because it is designed to render those polygons as fast as possible rather than as accurately as possible. So that's why it consistently scored higher in the average and maximum because it can do it faster than the Quadro card. Uh, so then we come on to Unreal Tournament 2003 and we just used the baked in benchmark that comes with the game at 1024 by 768. Uh, now I chose that resolution because it was above 60 frames a second so we could alleviate uh, CPU bottlenecking and things like that. Um, and well, yeah, the flyby, we got 160, 169, 166, 169, uh, 83 and 84 for the bot match. Now, this is average FPS uh, of three runs, and then I recorded those each of those three runs and then divided uh, the average, basically, from those three runs. And, yeah, you can see how much of a difference AI in-game when the game engine is and the CPU is having to work to render out all of the physics of the... Uh, like the maths of the AI running around and shooting and things like that. That's why the FPS is half that of just a flyby through the map where all you're rendering is the static map geometry itself. Then we're going to move on to Aquamark 3. Now this is a DirectX 9 based benchmark, uh, again running at 1024 by 768. And well, these, yeah, these two cards are pretty much identical, uh, again, because this is a Direct 3D benchmark, so this is consistent with what we had with uh, Code Creatures, for example. We're seeing very little difference, uh, discrepancy in OpenGL, uh, sorry, in Direct 3D between the two cards. Uh, and in fact, in some slight cases here, you can see that the Quadro is actually pulling ahead uh, very, very slightly. I mean, if you look at the overall score here, it's one point different. Um, but the actual graphics score... Uh, breakdown. So the results of this is you get a graphic score, you get a CPU score, and then you get the overall score. Now, the graphic score for the two cards was identical. Now, this was recorded. I did three runs of Aquamark 3 and then picked the third run results um, because the uh, when you do a fresh boot up, uh, as I was mentioning previously, Aquamark 3 can actually have a uh, very in in inaccurate benchmark the first and second run you do in a row, and you should always record the third uh, third run through or pass of the benchmark as the results, uh, because that seems to be the most accurate and consistent results thereafter. Uh, so it's neck and neck. 
pretty much. There's, there's, you can't tell the difference between the two. The final test that I wanted to do is to illustrate once again the differences in OpenGL when it comes to the Quadro card here. So I was going to be using uh, either Sirius, Sam or uh, Quake 3, but I ran into some issues when trying to benchmark those games and I wanted also an ease of replication from you guys as well. It's very easy to get Quake 2 these days. You can buy it on GOG. You can even get a copy of it off of eBay, a legit copy of eBay, very cheap. But you can also download the Crusher and the Massive One benchmarks online. Just type in what they are. Make sure you also download, if you're, for instance, running the latest version, uh, let's say you're, sorry, running the original version of Quake, like the, uh, like version 1.0. You will need to upload, uh, update uh, the newest patch, which you can, you can also just find on uh, online as well. And then these demos will run. So I crank the graphics settings up to really put an emphasis on the video card rather than the CPU. So we're running 1600 by 1200, AA times four, AF times eight on both of the demos. And well, it spits out the exact number of frames for each card and consistently by a noticeable amount, the uh, GeForce card is able to render and complete the benchmark faster than the Quadro card can. Now this is uh, time, so this is how long the benchmark took. So we're running at 21 seconds, 21 point, sorry, spit it out, 22.1 seconds for Crusher. And it rendered uh, on average 75.5 frames a second, whereas the Quadro took 26 seconds with an average of 64.1 FPS. Uh, and moving down to the massive one, which is usually a little bit faster. Um, yeah, again, GeForce is faster because it can run uh, OpenGL faster than it can direct. Uh, sorry, let me correct myself there. It can handle, uh, it can render OpenGL faster because, again, the Quadro is trying to uh, emphasize precision and quality and accuracy over just rendering the next frame as fast as possible. And this is the kind of results that is fairly consistent up and down the product stack of GeForce and Quadro cards. There are a few outliers because there's a few Quadro cards that have been made specifically for a certain uh, type of professional work and they don't translate because they might not even necessarily have a GeForce equivalent um, that you can just chuck in and you know see a you know a, a exact difference between. Sometimes a Quadro card will actually be clocked lower than its GeForce equivalent, even though the core is identical, and that's because it's designed to be a, a more stable uh, designed card and operated for longer hours under sustained workloads. Uh, so a lower frequency usually means then it's more stable, um, whereas a GeForce card. You don't have to have that uh, validation, so sometimes that part will be clocked higher on the GeForce card because it's not designed to be uh, run at, at the same sustained level of uh, what the Quadro card is designed to do. Uh, and of course, the, there's professional validation and all that kind of stuff that comes into it as well. Well, I hope this has uh, gone a bit of a way to show you guys the, uh, I guess, the, the strengths and weaknesses of these two cards. And if you want to use a Quadro card in a retro gaming PC, for example, uh, just what kind of performance you can expect across the board, depending on what uh, sort of different types of games and engines and things like that you play. But I do have to say that the Quadros do hold their own, even you might have to do a little bit more driver uh, optimization, like trying to find uh, the right driver that suits the games that you're playing. Uh, I do know, like I mentioned, games uh, like Quake 3 and Serious Sam did actually have some issues with uh, some of the different drivers that I was using, which is why I ended up leaving them out of this test. So thanks very much for watching guys, I hope you guys enjoy this little bit of an in-depth review. Um, I do apologise, it was a little bit rambly in a way, this was very off script for me, um, didn't really do much uh, in terms of sort of planning out how I was going to be talking about all this, just sort of went through the results and sort of talked uh, off the cuff a bit about my, uh, bit, you know, some of the knowledge that I know about these cards. So thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll catch you in the next one, bye for now.